Hello everyone, welcome to Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches, episode number 22. My name is Monica, I'm the host. This is a knitting podcast, sometimes, there, sometimes there's a little bit of crochet, um, and sometimes there's a little bit of other crafty goodness, depending on what I get up to. So, um, it's been about three weeks since I last recorded, which, um, my apologies, but um, I have been working quite a bit these last few weeks. Um, so. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my new job is in a retail store um, owned by um, a local, it's a local business, so it's owned by, um, by um, people who are local to this area, and um, we are, uh, we really only, there's only like, I think there's only 10 employees, including the two owners. Um, so, so really, um, to run a successful retail store that has two locations, um, in my town, um, we, we have been kind of working around the clock. Um, so, um, I just haven't really had a whole lot of time for n too much knitting, um, or, uh, the time to record and upload a podcast. I expect now that, um, we're done with the holiday season, um, we get pretty slow in January. I will have more time to devote to my extracurricular activities, I guess. Um, so, um, with that being said, if you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are um, coming back, uh, thank you for listening to me ramble and rant. Um, actually, both of you, everyone, thank you for listening to me ramble and rant. Um, I really enjoy um, uh, the time that I get to spend with you guys. So, um, I just want to let you know, most of today's episode is going to be acquisitions because I've been a very, very bad saver. <laughs> so today, um, I have a lot of acquisitions. I have one or two, no, I've got three works in progress to share, one finished object, and then my acquisitions. So it may be a little bit of a shorter episode because I'm not going to go into too much depth on um, the things that you have seen already. Um, like my first thing, which actually is a, um, so my first thing actually is a work in progress. I'll share my works in progress first. I will share my, my, uh, finished object after that. So, um, my first work in progress is something that you have seen before, and I probably won't show this on every podcast, but I have the last couple of times. Um, is my granny stripe blanket. Sorry, I'm trying to get it organized here. So it's grown significantly since the last time you saw it. The last time you saw it, it was right where my really festive stitch marker is right here. It's gotten several rows since then, and I really love this pop of green right here. Um, I'm now adding minis from uh, that I got in my swaps. Um, or my uh, get your yarn wishes granted uh, thing. So I'm adding all of these are all of the minis that um, Suzanne from Green Lambkin Yarns sent me, um, and I really love them. They are so special. Like most of the rest of them are things that I have either like purchased as minis or like our leftovers from projects like this was the one of the pairs of socks that i made this year this was a pair of socks that i made for my grandmother um this was from my um one of my shawls that i made like so it's mostly just my my projects but it's really really nice to put in minis from other people and it makes me even more happy for whatever reason Anyway, so now that I have shown it on the podcast, I will move this marker over to here, and then I'll continue on and show my progress next time if I make any significant progress. Um, and by significant progress, like if I make one row, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share it on the podcast. But um, if I do five or six rows, I'll show you. But yeah, so it is long enough to fit on my full size bed. Um, 
which means it is long it is actually longer than my wingspan so yeah um, I'm pretty sure that my wingspan is exactly 50 inches I'm not sure I haven't measured my wingspan in a while um, <laughs> not that my wingspan is likely to change um, but yeah so that is that um, I've got this whole gobstopper ball of yarn to um, to use uh, yeah I'm excited about it it's going to be fun um, and so that's what I've been working on when I haven't had the brain power to do anything like knitting because sometimes knitting takes too much of my brain um, I've been keeping this in my bag that I got from Knit Picks. It's yarn as a part of a high fiber diet, and I absolutely love this bag. Um, it's actually really, it's really sturdy. It's pretty made of um, some sort of canvas fabric, I believe. Um, no, it's 100. Well, it's 100% recycled cotton, um, but it is like a cotton canvas, um, and so it's got this like snap closure. It's like a pretty, pretty little snap, and it's pretty easy to get open. Um, and then there's like this little, this little like pouch on the inside for like notions or whatever. Um, and then it's just a big tote bag, which is really fun. It's really useful. I actually used it the last time we went to D&D, &D, which was good because like I fit my, I have like a clipboard with my character sheet and then I put my dice bag in there and then just that. And then I used, I crocheted the whole time. Um, my next work in progress is um, something that I'm actually working on for a friend of mine. Um, so when I finished my Chuck sweater, I had this much yarn left over, like one and a half balls of this fisherman's wool, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, and so I, uh, one of my friends asked me if I would make them a Chuck sweater. So I have begun that process. So um, there is the back. This is the back piece. I have, I'm very close to being done with this piece and then I'll move on to, um, you attach the front piece to it and then, and then work your way down. But yeah, so there is that. It's kind of a rolly, curly piece of fabric. There we go. That's better. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on a second Chuck sweater. Not for myself. This will be the first garment that I've ever knit for anyone else. Um, and luckily she knows how to take her measurements. Um, she sews and uh, also she does knit as well. But so like she knows how to take her measurements, which makes it a lot easier for me. Um, for somebody who doesn't know how to take their measurements, it's, it's a more difficult, I would say, to uh, construct a garment for them because they don't, they may measure wrong or, or whatever, but I'm fairly confident that the measurements she gave me were, were pretty accurate. So I will, um, I will uh, be working on that. I don't know, um, I don't really have like an ETA of, ETA of when I'm gonna be done with that, but um, it is something that I'm working on. So the next work in progress I have to share with you is actually a shawl design of my own. Um, and I have shown the swatch, and it's not much different from the swatch. So I've shared the swatch with you um, not that long ago. I think it might even have been in my last episode. Um, but I got the yarn for the other part of the shawl, and um, I'm just really excited. So it's going to be two color. It's a two color shawl, and so the first um, the first section is garter stitch, and it is a colorway. This is uh, Little Bean Loves in the Slytherin Common Room colorway. Um, so this is a um, on the bias rectangle shawl. So it is. Um, if you've ever seen the Lily Pilly shawl by Amba O'Brien, which is a really, really popular one, um, this is the same shape as that shawl. Um, so yeah, um, so this is a garter st stitch section. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of striping. The other section is going to be black. So um, there. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of striping and then lace. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I love how it's turning out. I have already written the pattern, which is an accomplishment because most of the time I knit it first and write the pattern later, but I found that that method does not work for me very well because I um, procrastinate a lot. So um, I did a lot of math using my gauge swatch, which was the first time I've ever done that too. I've done a lot of math using my gauge swatch so I know exactly how many rows I need to knit. Um, and so I have written the pattern. Um, I still have to chart the instructions for the lace section, um, but I have to figure out if I'm gonna get stitch mastery before I do that or not. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I think it is going to be really cool. Um, I, I will also be looking for test knitters if anyone is uh, interested in that. Um, I'm going to finish my sample first and send it off to my tech editor. Um, and then, um, and then after that is when I'll be looking for test knitters. So it'll be after the new year. It'll probably be in February that I'm even looking for them. Um, but I just wanted to, um, throw that out there. If you are interested, you can feel free to message me. Um, and then I'll put you on the list for when I actually do look for, um, for test knitters. Um, and honestly, those three things are, are pretty much what I've been working on. Um, I do have one finished object that you didn't see as a work in progress. Um, I'm sorry for some crinkling here. I wrapped it before I remembered that I had to share it on the podcast. All right. So, um... I only knit one Christmas present this year. Um, last year, I knit all of my Christmas presents. And if you go back to my very first episode, I think that's me sharing with you all of the things that I knit for people for Christmas. So um, this year, I decided only to do one, only to, to knit one present for someone. Um, and so I chose that one person as my roommate, um, who I've been friends with since I was like eight. Um, and... Uh, so she used to want to be a school teacher. She used to want to teach science to, um, I believe sixth graders, anyway, middle schoolers. Um, and she has decided she's going back to grad school right now for higher education. So, um, I, um, feel like these socks are fairly appropriate. So here they are. So these are the number two pencil socks. Um, yeah, they are, so I mostly just took my own, um, my own spin on them. I know that there is a pattern and like yarn that comes from, um, if I can find the name, I'll put it on the screen. I forget, I forget the name. I'm not a very good podcaster today. Um, but, and so the only part that I followed their pattern for the number two pencil socks is, um, is this part here because I didn't know how many rows to put in between the little pearl bumps. Um, but yeah, so this is a really easy, simple sock pattern. This is my very first toe up heel flap and gusset though. Um, and I'm really proud of it. And I think this is probably how I'm going to do my toe up socks from now on. Um, my, my roommate and I have like the same size feet. So I tried it on and it fits really well. Um, and the heel flap and gusset, like I don't, um, feel like, uh, it's as much of a hassle. Like there's never going to be any like holes or anything in the knitting when you do the toe up heel flap and gusset. Um, because of the way that you construct it. Um, yeah. So I found like a really simple pattern on Ravelry that I think was free, um, for a tutorial on the heel flap and gusset for a toe up sock. Um, and yeah, so I'm really proud of these. Um, all of these yarns were nitpicks. So this one is dogwood heather, I think. Um, this one is cobblestone heather. This one is... I want to say it's either dandelion or, um, it's not dandelion. It might be, um, whatever. It's like the yellowest of yellow <laughs> of the stroll. Um, this one is cork and this one is black. So, and it's all stroll, all nitpick stroll, um, uh, which means that it is superwash, which is, I did that on purpose so that she could actually just wash these in the washing machine. Um, and yeah. 
So, um, I made her a little, um, a little tag for them. It's number two pencil socks, handmade with love. <laughs> I have terrible handwriting. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that she'll really like them. Um, I think I have shown her those, like when I found them online, I think I showed them to her and she thought they were kind of funny. So hopefully she'll enjoy them. Sorry for some more crinkly. Okay. Um, and... Um, yeah, and so those really honestly are the only things I've been working on. So, um, most of the rest of this is going to be acquisitions, and if that's not something that's, um, that's... Uh, appealing to you, then um, I will say goodbye now. Um, and um, if you're sticking around, then you're about to see a whole bunch of yarny goodness. So, first, the first acquisition I made, um, I decided finally that I want some of Amy Florence's uh, yarn. So, she is the dyer behind. Um, behind uh, Stranded Dye Works. Um, and so I got this skein of singles. Um, it is called P.E. Knickers. Um, I absolutely love this deep tonal blue. It is gorgeous. It is going to be really difficult to get to show up properly on screen, but I absolutely love this color so much. It is so gorgeous. The yarn is so soft. Um, and I am really excited to get this caked up. And, um, this is one of the three skeins for my Oracle shawl. I think I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the half moon Oracle shawl or the, um, the full pie. Um, but, um, I'm doing one of the two with this. Um, probably the half. I'm going to go with the half. Um, the next one that I, that I purchased, um, and I didn't realize it was going to go so well with this one, um, is from the Corner of Craft. So, uh, Hannah of the Corner of Craft has started her own yarn line. Um, this is called It's Chromatic Yarns, um, uh, by the Corner of Craft. Um, and all of her yarns are named after Dungeons and Dragons things. And I think it is awesome. Um, I am a huge fan of d and I always have been. Um, like since I was a little kid. Um, and so I got the colorway. This is, there's the tag. So it is called Storm of Vengeance. Um, it is a BFL nylon, 7525. Um, and, uh, so here is the color. So there we go. That's fairly accurate as to what it is, um, on there. But I think these two go together so well. This like purpley blue matches this so well. I think I'm gonna use both of these, even though they're different bases, I don't really care. Um, I'm going to use both of these in my uh, Oracle shawl. And then because um, I can't help myself, I went to my grandmother's um, local yarn store in Belfast. And um, when, when I got there, she, um, my grandmother actually gave me a $50 gift card. So the, one of the first things that I picked up was a third yarn for the Oracle shawl. So I'm definitely going to be making that shawl at some point next year. Um, and this one, it is a really great, um, charcoal gray. Um, so this is by string theory. Um, the caper sock base um it is in the color called noir but it's a very deep charcoal gray i wouldn't call it a black but it's a really really deep charcoal gray um and i just think these three skeins go really well together um and i'm just really looking forward to making that shawl everybody says that they they love that pattern and i'm really excited to be able to make it and actually have found good yarn for it um, and so until I cake that up, which will be right before I start making the shawl, I'm keeping it in there. Um, I haven't decided when I'm going to start making that shawl yet, but, um, it will be very soon. 
All right, continuing on with what I purchased from the yarn store. So my grandmother actually gifted me these two skeins. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I think the colors are really, really gorgeous. Um, so she gifted me these two skeins. Um, and actually, I believe that this is like a cotton acrylic blend. Um, yeah, cotton acrylic. Um, and I can't really tell, every, it's all written in, um, I think it's all in written in German, so I'm not really sure what uh, size the yarn is, how many wraps per inch it gets, but um, I'm gonna do a gauge swatch before I, before I determine what pattern I'm gonna use to make this into something. Um, but yeah, so it's really, they're really pretty, um, and I really like these colors, like I really like this purple here. Um, so those are two that she gifted to me. Um, and then my, this local yarn store was having a sale on some colors of Cascade 220, or yeah, of Cascade 220, um, uh, in the worsted weight. Um, and so instead of them being $8.99 per skein, it was $5 per skein. So I bought seven skeins of this bright green. It is absolutely blowing out on camera. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that to show up as deep and rich as it actually is. Um, is mm, nope, no. It's not gonna ever show up as deep and rich as, that act as it actually is. This is the color number 8894, which after a search on Google, it is the Christmas green colorway. Um, and it is, no, that's still blowing out. Well, it is a lot like more rich green than it is showing up here. Um, but yeah, I have seven skeins of this. Um, I think I'm going to make a pullover with it. Um, I haven't decided, I really want it to be a textured pullover, but I haven't decided what, um, which one yet. Um, if I can manage it, I'll put some pictures in here. I really like, there is a, a sweater called the Caribou. Um, I can't remember the designer's name, but I'll put a picture of it and I'll, I'll write it on the screen. Um, yeah, so the Caribou sweater is, is a top contender for this. Um, and I have a couple of other ideas because I'm not sure if I have exactly enough to make the caribou and I don't want to um, do a halfway job on it. Um, I would like to do, um, I would like to, I don't know. I'm tempted though to make it like a three quarter sleeve which would probably make it so that I have enough, but we'll see. Um, I will make that decision at a later date. Um, but yeah, so that is um, that. Um, I'm really, really drawn to both blues and greens um, in yarns lately. And so my mom actually asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I told her that I just want yarn. Um, Cause she asked me if she sent me money, would I spend it on yarn? And the answer to that is no. Um, I have other things and other priorities that I would that I would put first before the yarn um, and I probably wouldn't spend the money that she sent me on yarn. So um, I told her I found several yarns from Knit Picks that I wanted her to get me. I sent her a whole bunch of links to a whole bunch of dyers and um, and to some yarns on Knit Picks and so she chose Knit Picks um, and uh, and one of the colors that I gave her, I gave her the specific, like the link, and then I gave her the specific colorway that I wanted. Um, and um, so this is the first one. This is Evergreen. It's the Stroll Tonal. Sorry for the noise, that's my, my heater. Um, but yeah, so this is showing up fairly true to color. It is a little bit darker than, than it is showing up. I have three entire skeins of this. So I could actually get a fingering weight sweater out of this, um, but I'm going to be making a stroll. Um, I'm going to be making the leaves of grass. Um, it's like, a, it's a pie shawl and it's by Jared Flood, I believe. I'll put a picture of it in here, but um, I'm going to be making that out of these. Um, I may have to buy a fourth skein, but um, I think that'll be fine. Even if it is a different lot number, I will um, stripe it and it'll it'll look fine, I think. Um, 
So there's that. Those are the ones that I specifically asked for. I didn't ask for three, but I, maybe I did. I can't remember if I asked for a sweater quantity or not. Um, but um, yeah, so I am super excited about that. Um, and then um, one of the links that I sent to her was for one of their Tweety yarns. Um, and this is one that actually has alpaca in it. So it's the City Tweed. Uh, it's a DK weight and whoop, there I go dropping it. Uh, it's a DK weight. This is the colorway Orca. Um, and so this yarn is a, it is 55% merino, 25% alpaca, and 20% Donegal Tweed. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm super excited to make a sweater out of it. Now I've been looking for a big grandpa sweater to make out of this. Like I want a cardigan and I want it to be like oversized. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to be making the portage, which means I need a whole lot more of this yarn. Um, I don't know if the portage is actually written for DK weight, but I really like that sweater and I'll pop a picture in here, but um, I really like the sweater. I've got about five balls of this right now and I know that's like not even halfway enough to make a, to make a sweater, but I'm going to be ordering more of this um, very soon. And again, if it's just the, if it's a different lot number, I will just stripe it and it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited about all of the yarn that I have now. Um, I went through and made myself an Excel sheet uh, of my stash so that I know what I have in my stash now because I ended up buying two of the same skeins from Knit Picks like six months apart and I didn't really want to um, keep doing that I guess. Like I bought it not thinking I had it and then I went through my stash and I found a second ball of it. So I didn't need to buy it in the first place. Um, but yeah, so that is, um, those are all of my acquisitions, I think, um, <laughs> which is quite a bit of yarn. Um, I have a lot of projects planned for next year, obviously. So I have the Oracle shawl I have by, I don't know if I mentioned who that's by. Pretty much everybody knows, but <laughs> it's, uh, the Oracle shawl by, um, by the dyer behind Bull and Vine Yarns. Um, and I've got the leaves of grass. I've got a, some sort of textured pullover. I have um, a big grandpa cardigan. I have, that's, that's already a lot so far. Um, I did, uh, I forgot to do my um, end of the year sort of roundup um, of all of the patterns that I've made this year. Um, but, Maybe I can put that in at the end, or uh, maybe I'll do like a New Year's episode, actually. That's probably a better idea. I think I'm gonna do a New Year's episode um, telling you sort of everything that I accomplished this year and everything that I would like to um, do in the new year. Um, and yeah, so I hope that, I think that is it. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Um, I'm gonna be spending it with some really dear friends and um, and just kind of relaxing because the last couple of days have been pretty stressful. Um, but yeah, so now that the Christmas season at work is done, I can sort of sit down and relax and enjoy myself. So um, I will um, be back very soon with a special New Year's episode. Have a lovely day and um, a Merry Christmas and whatever else you celebrate. Bye.